we're still going to stick with some of the ideas that we've got to do with differentiation, but we're going to be looking at some things to do with maxima and minima kind of situations. And you've come across maxima and minima problems from pure maths, and it says, recall from pure that at a, a minimum or maximum point, the gradient is zero. We could therefore, for example, find where the velocity is a minimum or maximum by finding out when dv dt is equal to zero i.e. when the acceleration is zero. Now there's quite a lot of information packed into that sentence, so I really want to break it down what's happening there, okay? We were saying we could find an example where the velocity is a minimum or a maximum by finding dv dt equals zero. So let's just pause for a second. Imagine I had a velocity time graph that looked like this kind of curve here. If I wanted to find out where the velocity was, a maximum in this curve, we can see that the maximum velocity in this particular section is here. And that is when the gradient of this curve is zero. Now, usually it would be y and x, and we would say dy by dx. But we would be saying at this point here, dv by dt is equal to zero. Now, interestingly, dv dt is the acceleration. So when the acceleration is zero, it will be at that particular point that is there as well. Now that makes sense that the acceleration there is zero, even if you think of it in like a real world kind of thing. Here it looks like it is slowing down, and then it looks, sorry, here it looks like it's speeding up, and then it looks like it's slowing down. So at some point in that in-between bit, it's neither speeding up nor slowing down, so the acceleration must be zero. Similarly, if we had a displacement time graph, so I'm going to use S for my displacement, and I might want to say what is the minimum displacement. Well, this minimum displacement here is clearly when ds dt is equal to zero. But ds dt is velocity. And it makes sense that the velocity there is zero because something is traveling back down towards where it started. It pauses for a short moment, and then it starts traveling in the other direction. Maybe a better graph for that last one would have been for me to draw this kind of shape. And here, we would have said ds dt is zero. And this should remind you of that video of me throwing a stone on the beach. That's the stone at the top point where the velocity is zero that we have there. Now, although I have just mentioned ds dt and dv dt being equal to zero, we do not always have to use differentiation to find the maximum speed or velocity. Because we already, earlier on this lesson, found it without doing differentiation. So I'm just going to quickly flash from this slide again. Earlier on, we did this question down here, where we were talking about the greatest speed in that particular interval. You might have thought, oh, great, I'll just do differentiation to find the maximum or the minimum. But in the end, the greatest speed was actually not at a turning point because of this information they gave you here. So I'm telling you that now because in about 10 minutes' time, you're going to do a question that doesn't require differentiation to find a maximum. You have to read the question carefully. So let's actually go back to what we were looking at with maximum minimums. Um, so it says here, a child is playing with a yo-yo. The yo-yo leaves the child's hand at time t equals 0 and travels vertically in a straight lien, I should say straight line, before returning to the child's hand. The distance, s meters, of the yo-yo from the child's hand after time t seconds is given by this particular equation that we've got here. And it's a displacement time equation that we've got here. Now, it says to begin with, justify the restriction 0, t, 3. In other words, t is only valid between 0 and 3. Now, I look at this as your maths teacher, and I go, hmm, that's weird. I don't know. I don't know. Why is the restriction between 0 and 3? But then as your maths teacher, I think, well, I'm going to try and find out. What kind of things do you think I might do to try and find out why they're even bothering saying 0 and 3? What, what could I pot potentially do with this thing that might help me? I could solve the roots. OK, I could solve the roots. That might give me some kind of indication. After I've solved the roots, when I find roots, what does that usually help me to do? To draw a graph. So often in these questions, if there's something that makes you go, hmm, that's weird, what you're going to need to do is draw a graph 
I'm not sure what the graph is going to tell me, but what I do know is the graph is going to give me some more information. So I'm going to solve the roots for this. So, I mean, shall we be lazy and just put it on our calculators? Yes, I think so. But you could see you could do this without a calculator because there's a factor of t in there. So let's find out what this is. Careful, this is the cubic bit that goes first. So if you're putting it on your calculator, you would do it like this. So you get 0 and how many? Minus? Minus 1. So you've got 0, 3, and minus 1. Now, if I'm going to draw this as a graph, I'm going to get rid of this graph I've got here so it's a little bit less busy on the board. There's my minus 1. There's my 0. There's my 3 that I've got here. What type of graph is it? A negative cubic, negative cubics, that kind of shape, right? So when I put this on here, my negative cubic is going to go down, up, down like this, OK? This was 0, this was 3, and this was minus 1. Now we've got the graph. This might help us to try and explain some of the things that is going on here. So let's just remind ourselves of this scenario. It's a child playing with a yo-yo, and the distance, s, of the yo-yo from the child's hand is given by this. So at the beginning, the yo-yo, where is the yo-yo at the beginning? On the child's hand. After three, after like, I don't know, one or two seconds, the yo-yo has gone away from the child's hand in the positive direction. Which way do you think the positive direction is going to be? He just thinks sensibly. Towards? No, which is the positive direction in real life of this child throwing the, the radio? Down. Down is the positive direction. So what happens to this yo-yo after three seconds? Yeah, this is not how yo-yos work. When you throw a yo-yo down, it comes back up to your hand. It then doesn't then like go out of your hand and hit you in the face, right? It's just a phone. So this is now helping us to explain what the restriction is because it only makes sense for the yo-yo. Um, S must be greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero for the yo-yo. So when T is in between, S is greater than 0. Um, yeah, so that's why. When S is greater, sorry, S is greater than 0 for the yo-yo. So when T is in between 0 and 3, S is greater than 0. We could also say something like S cannot be negative. We obviously could have said over here, well, S is, S is positive when T is less than minus 1 but this child isn't going to be throwing the yo-yo at t equals minus 1, OK? So this is why this restriction is only between 0 and 3 here, because that's the only time that the displacement is positive. And this isn't, so you, you won't do a question and copy exactly what I've done here. You have to stop, you have to think, you have to decide what makes sense in that case. Okay, This is not an example for you to then copy and decide, this is how I do these questions. This is an example that makes you go, hmm, OK, well, I'm going to draw it and see what happens. It then says calculate the maximum distance of the yo-yo from the child's hand. So remember, this is s and this is t. And we want to know the maximum distance. In other words, I want to find out what's the maximum distance that it is from the child's hand. Now, if this was y and x, we would do what to find the, the hump? You differentiate. You'd find dy by dx, wouldn't you? But we're not going to do dy by dx for this bit. We're going to say that ds dt, that's where y and x would normally be, ds dt is equal to 0. In other words, the velocity is 0. Now, have you, who's, you've all thrown a yo-yo before, right? When you throw the yo-yo and it goes down to the bottom, what's its velocity when it's at the bottom? It's 0. This is why we're talking about the velocity being 0. So it's all connected together. Everything you did with Mr. Udin in differentiation and everything you've done with me in mechanics, they are fully, fully connected together. 
So for part B of the question, um, maximum S is when ds dt is equal to zero. Remember, that's the same thing as saying when the velocity is equal to zero. Just like that rock that I threw on the beach when it was at the maximum point, just like that having a velocity of zero, this will also have a velocity of zero when it's at the bottom of the throw. So I'm going to differentiate it. If s is 0.6t plus 0.4t squared minus 0.2t cubed, I'm going to find out what the sdt is to find that turning point. And you get 0.6 plus 0.8t minus 0.6t squared. And I want that to be equal to 0. Seeing as we're doing so much on the calculator today. Before you even do that, I want you to predict, if you've, if you've already um, written all this down, predict what are those values of t going to roughly be? <coughs> roughly? Probably maybe somewhere about 1.5. We're not sure if this is symmetrical. It won't be bang on, but somewhere in between 0 and 3. The other one will be? Some kind of, some kind of negative value as well, because we're trying to say, where are these two turning points here? OK. So when you put this on your calculator, what do we get? Has no one done it yet? 1.87. Good, we need to do a few. 86851, that's enough. And then the other one? Five three five. This one, we're not going to use though because it's referring to the bit when the time is negative. So what we're going to do now with that value of t, we will sub in that value of t. Where am I going to sub it in? To ds dt? or to the s function? The s function. If I put it into the ds dt function, I would get 0, because that's the one we just solved. So I'm going to sub in into my s equals 0.6t plus 0.4t squared minus 0.2t cubed. So we're going to put that into there. And I'm hoping someone has done that for me. I got this, 1.21 meters. And I'll write that to three significant figures. If you feel like you've done a bit of rounding up here, I wouldn't have written 1.2 on. I would have just written 1.2 and done it to two significant figures. You know, if you're ever in a rush and you think, oh my god, I rounded that, I, I might have got this bit wrong, just be a bit more heavy handed and say, I'll do two significant figures instead, and you'll still get the marks for that. Does the answer seem reasonable? And if so, why does it seem reasonable? Because it didn't travel a large distance, so it only come back within three seconds. Yeah, great. I think 1.21 meters, if you think about how big that is, that's probably like here. It's probably the amount of distance you'd expect a yo-yo to go down and then to be coming back up again. So if you've got an answer of like 85 meters, you're wrong because a child cannot throw a yo-yo 85 meters and it still come back to them. Okay, so we're going to look at one more question about um, a dolphin and then you're going to do an exam question and then we'll do some practice kind of ones at home as well. So, a dolphin escapes from SeaWorld and its velocity as it speeds away from the park is t cubed minus 9t squared minus 48t plus 500 until it reaches its maximum velocity and then subsequently remains at this velocity. When does the dolphin reach its maximum velocity? So here, we've got to be careful. They told us that v is equal to t cubed minus 9t squared minus 48t plus 500. I imagine this is probably not going to be very realistic, this question, but we'll see. Um, 
and they didn't tell us x or s, they told us what the velocity is, and we want to find out when it reaches its maximum velocity. What would be true at the maximum velocity? If we were to just imagine a velocity graph, maximum velocities is when the acceleration is equal to zero, or that's the same thing as saying that the, the dy by dx, or the dv dt, is equal to zero on a graph, OK? So I don't need this graph. That's just to help me remember that. So I can either say dv dt, or I can say it's the acceleration and just differentiate this. So you get 3t squared minus 18t minus 48. And I want this to, to be equal to 0. So I get 0 equals 3t squared minus 18t minus 48. Now, I I'm, I'm don't like using the calculator all the time. So I'm going to factorize. So t is 8, and t is minus 2. Obviously, you could go straight to doing that on the calculator, but I haven't got my calculator on that page, so being this is my version of being lazy, it's doing it the long way. <laughs> so when does the dolphin reach its maximum velocity? When t is equal to 8 seconds. Because t can't be negative in this particular case that we have here. Never is never going to get something where you'll be allowed a negative answer for t. It then just says, what is this maximum velocity? So where am I going to put t equals 8? Good. That's the thing that sometimes people can get confused of where they put it. If you put it into the wrong place, if you put it into here, what would you get if you put 8 in here? 0. You should get 0, because that's what we've just said. It's equal to 0. So when t is equal to 8, v is equal to 8 cubed. Wow, this is probably going to be insanely fast. This is not very realistic. Well, we'll see. Maybe it won't be. So we have... 8 cubed minus 9 times 8 squared minus 48 times 8 plus 500. Okay, maybe it's not that crazy. It's pretty fast. 52 meters per second. Actually, it's not that bad. It's going at. Uh... No, it's going pretty fast. This is a super, super, super dolphin. I know you, I try and say check the reliability of them, but I don't think this is an official question. If it's trying to escape, then it'll be good. It's trying to escape, yeah? Like, it's the, it's the climax of the movie, like... <laughs> what kind of movie? You've not seen Free Willy? Oh, no. Which sounds like it's going to be a weird film, but it's about an orca whale. It's about a killer whale escaping from SeaWorld. It's film. made me cry <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> I don't think so. Maths, we don't like doing tricks. Maths, we like just doing maths. <laughs> okay, so what I want you to do, we've got ten, we've got ten minutes. I want you to have a go at doing this question here. Okay. So you've got 10 minutes, let's have a go at this question here. 